Hey everybody, uh, it's been a busy, itchy, sticky week here on the boat. Uh, doing a lot of little projects. Thought I'd give everybody an update. Uh, a lot of work has been done. Some of it shows and some of it doesn't. A lot of little detail work is really difficult to uh, have a lot of pride in because you put all these hours into it and it really doesn't show and maybe that's what it's all about. This is the main salon looking forward and all the bulkheads have been varnished. Uh, we're very, very lucky in that regard is that uh, even though there were scratches in them and the uh, varnish was in bad shape and then when exposed to the weather, uh, we were able to very, very carefully sand everything and it brought it back to near new condition. There are some holes in it, much of which will be covered by new wiring and lighting. Um, the boat has been completely painted inside with a primer paint. Uh, which we're uh, going to sand, which is the next nasty job. And then we're going to put the final coat of paint on the interior. But that really dulls down the pattern of fiberglass and makes it a matte finish inside to go along with the bulkheads, which would be real nice. Up forward, uh, it's got all the appeal of a refrigerator right now. But in the end, we'll have uh, ash battens on the hull sides, the trim will be back on these shelves. The head compartment is going to need some more work. We lost the fore and aft bulkhead that runs right next to the mast head here. Uh, everything else is in good enough shape to repair. We've put the tie rods back in and we have put the new chain plates in on both sides. If anybody's familiar with this, uh, you'll see that it just looks wonderful. And fortunately, our steel beam, where these tie rods connect down here in the sole under the mast beam, uh, our mast beam was in very good shape. It's very common that these have a problem. Um, the bottom part of this bulkhead had a problem with some water saturation and a little bit of rot, which we west system to uh, solidify it. And then we added four additional fasteners up into good wood so that we have a very firm uh, connection between the uh, steel beam and the existing bulkhead. We'll show you the other side of it in a second. One of our water tanks is gonna go under the V berth. And moving aft here, where a lot of the structural work was done, you can see on this side, we had uh, some rot very much at the base of this. So we built this uh, stainless steel backing plate, which extends down into the pan, picks up a couple fasteners there, and four additional fasteners at the top. Uh, that should give it real security. Outboard, where originally they used flathead fasteners into the plywood, we built backing plates for that as well, which is a much stronger and cleaner way of doing it. That's the port side. Over here on the starboard side, we did the same thing. And then up above that is the backing plate for the chain plates. Now, that was a big slab of bronze, and we didn't think that was necessary, so both here and on the port side, we put a lighter, more dainty backing plate. Uh, the load is taking on the front face of this by the chain plate itself. And then as you notice, we've wrapped fiberglass from the hull side onto the bulkhead itself and then drilled everything through that. So we're getting the load not just on plywood, but into actual structure. There has been additional reinforcing of the hull deck joint all the way back, and the bulkheads have all been re-tabbed into position. We also did that down in the pan area. Uh, this has all been reinforced under this bunk. The pan itself has been bonded in uh, down at the bottom. We were surprised at how poorly this was fiberglassed, and it really did not have a good bond in the hull. In addition, we put these frames into the keel cavity, and there are three structural bulkheads. And you can see this is the mass step cavity forward, and then we bonded the pan back under here as well, all along this whole ledge, um, bonding the, pot, the, the pan into the hull. Um, there was very little reinforcing there, just a cheap chopper gun and, and mat, and it had lost all of the structural integrity. See, the woodwork came out very nice, and that's going to match everything we have back in New Bedford, which we're about to ship out. Uh, again, we were very scratched up. There had been a lot of oil stains on it. 
but it came back remarkably, and this is going to look very nice. Uh, the ash battens, again, will be on the hull sides outboard, and that contrast will really make for a beautiful boat. A lot of these drawer frames right here were broken, so we epoxied and screwed those back together. So I think we're in pretty good shape. From the galley forward, I think everything's done, uh, other than uh, settling the tanks down. So with the stairs removed, we can now see um, what's going on back here with the engine beds. Uh, because our V-Drive unit is attached to the engine, it's not a separate V-Drive as they were originally installed. We had to remove the area of the engine bed pan that is forward of where the engine actually sits, because the engine sits backwards, of course. Um, so this is the new bilge for that that has not been painted out. The little cross section you see there will be removed at some point when we no longer need our stairs. Uh, to get the engine back where it needed to be, this uh, what appears to be Monel pipe, which is the shaft lock, is going to be shortened about the distance uh, to that mark right there. That allows us to get uh, the engine on the existing fiberglass mounts, which will be reinforced with some additional fiberglass. So quite a bit of work done there. Um, one of the other real liabilities in this boat, if you remember one of our early discussions on this boat, was the fact that the boat had a very deep bilge. The lead is in the forward part of the bilge, and basically everything behind the lead was just a deep cavity. So what we've uh, done at the suggestion of Jim Antra was to put a bulkhead that runs about halfway down uh, angle back till it uh, reaches the aft end of the keel. And so now we have a sump that you can actually reach into and if you drop something in there, drop a screwdriver or something, it's not a big production to try and get down in there and get that out of there. And removing the pan has really opened up this part of the keel. And this is just, I think, one of the best improvements we've made to the boat yet. Uh, we still have some final fitting to do on the engine. Another big part of the week here of trying to get things done was uh, the boat just looked like a piece of Swiss cheese after uh, almost 50 years of different equipment being brought in and out and hoses run and cockpit drains moved and all kinds of things. This, there were so many holes in these bulkheads, it was just embarrassing. So a big part of that was filling each one of the holes with a shaped piece of foam and then glassing over both sides of it and then fairing that out. The fact that you can't see any holes is an indication of just how long it took because there were a lot of holes. And then we've redrilled the one main drain hole here in the center, but everything else has been cleaned up the engines, it's ready for a final coat of paint in the engine room. And then the engine's going to be fit in there. And then any holes we need to drill will be specific to the new Beta 50 installation. So we're pretty excited about that. Everything is looking very good. There's been just tons of work done. This big glowing hole you see here is where our engine instruments will be in the cockpit, which is per perfectly located right at your feet, so you can actually keep an eye on the engine. And it's really out of the way, uh, and it's very accessible from the back side to the engine compartment. So happy with that. Below that, we're going to put a fuel tank in, probably about 20 gallons. We looked at putting it in the bilge, uh, but it started complicating all the fill hoses and feed hoses and return hoses. It started becoming a bit more complicated than we wanted to deal with. And we wanted to use part of this bilge for a battery bank, so we're working on that right now. So. Even though we came up with an initial plan, as we started working on the boat, it became obvious we wanted to make changes. And you just you can never predict, because you never are able to see until you have your hands in there that, you know, this locker is not big enough for a two-inch hose, or you're going to have to make a really ugly installation. So you have to roll the flow and just uh, put the boat together as best you can at the time you're doing things. And rather, anything else on the boat has just been left completely stock. This is the third side galley, the ice box, and then the port side is exactly the same. It's um, the doors and drawers have been redone, and we just have a bunch of uh, chemicals being stored in here at the moment. But basically, it'll be returned to the stock configuration. Uh, we're working on some details right now on the main bulkhead, haven't decided on 
what to do with those uh, holes that we have to be round holes, which were old compass and instrument packages, but a little more detailed fiberglass work to do, and then it'll be covered with mahogany trim. So I guess uh, maybe move outside and. So here on deck, we're dealing with um, the boat. She's just uh, just about ready to be final sanded and then primed for final paint. And what happened here is they've, uh, they've gone in and last paired the whole deck joint from stem to stern. And then uh, the big heavy job is just tearing that out with the uh, long boards and coarse sandpaper. And that runs all the way to the stern. So now the boat doesn't have any bolts holding it together. It has some. It's been bonded on the inside and then bonded on the outside. And now we're trying to get this smooth enough. Uh, still have a little bit of work to do back in the transom. And then uh, we're ready for the primer and the paint. It's an amazing amount of holes that have been filled. If you look around the boat, there's just hundreds and hundreds of holes that have been filled um, everywhere you look. And that's uh, that was a big job. You have to get in underneath and tape them and then fill them. We still have some work to do in the cockpit. There were some repairs made in the cockpit. Um, this is the old gas fuel um, fill ports. And we're going to be taking those out and uh, grinding that out a little bit and then reglassing the entire cockpit. Uh, the bridge deck here near the companionway is in the same situation. It needs to be completely filled um, because it delaminated. We've laminated in new material from the back, but it needs another coat of, of uh, fiberglass on top. We ground away a layer, and now we're going to add a layer in to make sure it's properly bonded. As you can see, it's a, all the gel coat's gone, and a layer of fiberglass has been taken out. So on deck, hundreds of holes have been filled. Um, as you can see, just everywhere you look, every piece of hardware, every fitting was removed, filled. And when it's sanded back down and we paint it, uh, you won't see any of this. And then we're going to use uh, a white paint on deck, matted slightly. And then we're um, going to use uh, Kiwi Grip, which is a non-skid material that's uh, pretty popular here both for its texture and for the fact that it can be repainted so easily. So if we move hardware, we can uh, correct our placement errors that we're sure to have. Um, so at any rate, a lot of work. As you can see, everywhere. Stem heads here. Um, everything's been fared out. It's ready for paint. And ports. The ports are here. The tow rails are here, although they haven't been put together yet. And the big port light windows we glassed over. Uh, we did actually core the sides of the main salon cabin. And this is just material that we're going to cut out. Um, the point being that a big part of the flexiness in the deck comes from the side of the house, actually, because it, it was such a light laminate. And I didn't really personally believe it was strong enough to go to sea. I wanted it reinforced, so we've done a little bit of reinforcing in the main salon with a half-inch uh, foam core. So that's about it at this point. Um, show you down below, head down to the ladder, and give you a little tour of the boat. Everything's pretty much the same as it was before when we rolled it. We've done a little more sanding, particularly up at the whole deck joint. Uh, down below, um, the keel is waiting for some fairing. Uh, they have it all marked out. We've used our templates, which are sitting down below here on the side. And we have our scribe lines in the hull. And where there was the, um, the most uh, disagreement with the plans, we've added some material. And there's a line drawn on that. They build it up to that. So that becomes the guide for fairing the rest of the keel. It actually um, was... The biggest problem was in the first third and of the bottom half of the keel, where the shape was just completely out. And we don't know whether the boat had been in an accident and additional materials added, but it, um, it did have some repair damage, and we just decided we'd take a harder look at this and try and get the shape back to the original plan.
And now one of the things we have to do is place all the through hulls. We're going to be doing that next trip and doing the hull to deck joint and put the keek on the boat. And it's going to feel like we're getting, getting a completed boat. There's still plenty to do because we have all the plumbing. Uh, the engine still has to be placed and all the machinery put in and uh, exhaust system, shaft, all those additional items need to be figured out. Um, so there's a lot of work yet to do. But we are headed in the right direction. It's very frustrating when you have two weeks like this. has been two weeks of hard work of just uh, grinding and sanding and filling and making dust and dust mess and jumpsuits and um, not very rewarding work. But we've kind of come to the conclusion of that, of that work. And the only real grinding, nasty grinding left to do is on this uh, this keel. And we're going to get to that here in the next two or three weeks. Anyway, that's where we are. Stay tuned. We're still working on this. <laughs>